It's the home of Shakespeare, football, and mushy peas. It's a place of happy valleys and friends in the north. It's gritty, outlandish. It's a cracker. If it has a heartbeat, you'll find it here. Hello, and welcome to an episode of The Best of British TV Drama, which is also a gut reaction review because um today i am talking about the new television series from writer director and producer guy ritchie the gentleman um which is i have to say absolutely fantastic um i binged the entire show in a single day i wasn't expected to be so drawn in and invested so quickly okay so let's get to it um <clears throat> the gentleman features an ensemble cast of uh interesting uh, characters it tells the story of the family of theo james's uh, character eddie honeman um and his brother freddie honeman who are basically um i guess you'd call them rich kids who've uh, inherited the, uh, their father's uh, legacy theo's just come back from serving um in what looks like kosovo um or uh, turkey um, at the beginning of um, uh, the show, uh, he's called back because his father's on his deathbed. Uh, his elder brother, uh, played very effectively by Daniel Ings, is expected to um, inherit the estate and most of the monies, only to find that his younger, more sensible brother has been um, bequeathed that in his will by the father. Um, uh, we're introduced to a whole plethora of uh, other characters as a result of this and we discover that um in the land um i'll try not to get into too many spoilers but um in in amongst their estate there is a ginormous weed farm which is uh owned by a criminal uh, syndicate uh, the head of which is the lovely ray winston um in an absolutely fantastic role that he's completely lifted from um the original italian job um controlling his empire from uh, his prison known as mr glass through his daughter susie glass who's played by kaya scololero so um uh, among this there are various other people who are trying to take control of their hidden um, criminal enterprise uh, including um another uh, crime syndicate headed up by uh, giancarlo uh, Esposito, who many people will remember from Breaking Bad, um, uh, lots of chaos ensues. There's a there's a criminal family of gypsies. There's um, uh, a criminal family of scousers, um, various other drug dealers, assassins, uh, all kinds of things. It has all the ingredients that you would expect from a Guy Ritchie TV show. However, um, it is much to its credit and i can't emphasize this strongly enough it is quite restrained for for guy ritchie he's pulled in a lot of the flash fast editing um to let this show kind of percolate at its own speed yeah some of those traits are still there and all the best traits are still there but um this is a much more measured show vinnie jones plays the gamekeeper um, who um, protects the grounds of the house in more ways um, than one, um, kind of reprising his role from Lockstock in many ways. You can almost see this being the same character. Uh, there's Daniel Ings um, <clears throat> in a chicken suit. And again, I won't get into spoilers as to why he's um, dressed like that. Uh, Ray Winston orchestrating his uh, activities uh, from prison. I mean, Ray Winston's just a, a phenomenal actor. I could literally watch him all day. Um, uh, there's Kaya playing uh, Susie Glass, his daughter. Um, Theo James wandering his estate with his pooch. Uh, that is Max Beasley, who um, heads another uh, criminal family. Uh, this is a show of cross and double cross uh, and triple cross and so on. Um, it starts with a funeral and ends with quite a few. Uh, season one sets up a whole plethora of storylines and characters. Um, 
but it moves at an absolutely cracking pace. Uh, there's never an episode that's boring. Guy Ritchie uh, wrote most of the show, but he did hand the reins over to several other talented writers. Uh, the eight episodes of the show, two of them are directed by him, two of them are directed by Erin Creevy, who uh, directed Welcome to the Punch. Uh, you've also got um, two episodes uh, directed by, um, the name's gone now, the guy who did Divorcing Jack and episodes of Line of Duty. So these are calibre directors uh, on board this um, show. Um, it is, it's, a, it's a really solid piece of work. It's one of the best things I've seen Netflix commission in quite a long time. Um, so, uh, yeah, everything about it kind of has that sort of sense of scale and um, it feels like a big budget show. The, the performances, the characters are really well defined. Um, particularly love this uh, Liverpool gangster preacher who's an absolute psycho. Um, uh, Giancarlo doing what he does best, um, playing slippery businessmen. But even characters like his um, personal assistant, who we see on the left here, um, are very well drawn. It's the, it's the, the supporting characters in this show um, are extremely, extremely good. There's their camera set up. God damn, that's a that's a that's a big setup for that. So um, yeah, this is a this is a fantastic show. It's really really good. Um, that that's an interesting outfit for guy to be wearing uh, all day long on a set. Um, yeah. So uh, and I'm, I mean the cast have amazing chemistry. Um, everybody looks like um, they're having fun, but we're having fun with them. It's it's not a case of you watching this show and uh, not enjoying the journey with these characters. Jolie Richardson plays the matriarchal mother. I think there's quite a bit more to her storyline that's going to unfold um, in the inevitable season two. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's set up for season two, but it is a perfectly satisfying arc um, for the first season. Um, you're not left with too many loose ends um th so this is a very very enjoyable watch if you just want to commit to one season but there's lots of stuff that's set up for the second season um yeah this is a great show um overall i'll probably talk about this show in fact not probably we will definitely talk about this show on the nielsen ratings um at 10 o'clock on tuesday Overall, I have to say this show is absolutely first class. I give it nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Um, really, really good television. Um, one of the best, probably the best thing I think Guy Ritchie's ever made. And um, the only thing that was missing from it was the um, enigmatic uh, presence of Hugh Grant. And I really hope his character maybe turns up in the second season because you just can't get enough of that character. Um, but yet, yeah, this is a really, really good show. Let's just go and uh, give a shout out. You know how I like to shout out some of the supporting lesser known actors. So I'm going to do that now. So let's uh, go and have a look at some of those. So um, in addition to the cast I've mentioned, um, you've got various actors who play heavies. Uh, one of those is Logan Dean. Um, great actor, great presence. Uh, really like him in this show. Um, I, I think he's um, got a great career uh, ahead of him uh, with many more fantastic roles to come. Um, again, it's, 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 it's a role that, that has not very little dialogue, but he does a lot with it. Um, that's also down to the directing as well, um, that they gave him room to, to um, uh, do some things with him. Uh, we've also got um, Piers Quigley as Gospel John. He's absolutely fantastic. Um, almost unrecognisable uh, under all this uh, facial hair. Um, but you may have seen him um, play less uh, threatening characters in The Detectorists. Uh, he's one of the nerdy guys in The Detectorists. In this, he's absolutely frightening um, as Gospel John. Fantastic character actor. Um, seriously, you'll, you'll be quaking in your boots when he's on screen can't um credit him enough for what he brought to that role uh mason fardo who's actually a friend of mine 
Oh, I'm annoyed there isn't a picture of him here. I'll have to find one in just a second. Um, he is um, playing another heavy. Um, he's actually got a nice little arc. I don't want to, again, give anything away um, and has a, a, a nice little speech um, as well. Um, does a really good job uh, with the role. Um, he is with DNA. I'm just going to put his headshot up so people can see who I'm talking about. Oh, God, blimey. Now I've got to go through them all. Oh, there he is. Um, so, yeah. Um, Mason does a great job to stand out in a in a you know a very 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 impressive cast. Um, you're talking uh, you're talking you know managing to um, make a character stand out in a cast that includes people like Ray Winston and Giancarlo Esposito is 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 no impressive feat. So well done, mate. Great job. Uh, really good in the role. Um, there's some other actors that I'd seen in other things. Um, uh, that I really liked in this. Um, Josh Finnan has been making a name for himself, um, has done some really good good roles in, uh, supporting roles in film and television. He's got a great role in this. Um, he's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, was quite impressed. Um, again, look forward to seeing more of him in the future. Uh, let's see who else we got. Um, I should also give... Um, Kaya a shout out as well. Where's she gone? Here we go. Second in the cast list. Look at that. So um, you may have seen her in um, things like The Maze Runner, uh, which is her main, um, probably the most things that people will know her for. But um, she was also in Crawl, which I thought was quite a good good movie, the one with the, the crocodiles in the, in the basement. Um, yeah, she's really good in this, um, really good. And uh, it's quite a different role for her. Um, so, um, yeah, there she is in uh, Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. I, I, I will be um, quite happy to admit that I did not bother with that film. This is Cruel. Um, she's great and cruel. In fact, I should do a, I should do a review of Cruel because it's a really good, good, good little film. Um, good little creature feature film um, with a lot of hungry alligators. Yeah. So um, you might want to check that out if you haven't seen it before. Um, also in the production, let's, uh, let's just do a couple more of these. Alex Rodney does a great job basically playing a PA, um, uh, but a PA that's written in a really interesting way. So credit to Guy Ritchie for um, giving this uh, man a character um, with actual depth and some interesting nuance plays him really well fantastic job um and again i think his character will probably be back so we're probably going to see more of him in the second season uh, john mcgrellis um is a, a jobbing um character actor from the uk uh, again nice little part um and uh, great to see him doing well as well. He's he's been working away for quite a long time. Um, had a great part in Little Boy Blue, uh, which, by the way, uh, I will also be doing a fantastic uh, Best of British review of. So we'll probably be talking about him again in the not too um, distant future. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, he's another actor that I, I want to see. I want to see do well. Um, Let's, uh, let's get back to the cast list here. Um, very good. Um, have I missed anyone that I want to shout out? Um, yeah, Chanel Creswell. Again, supporting role um, in, in what is a very, very big ensemble piece. Um, she plays the wife of Daniel Ings' character, um, Edwin, <laughs> depending on uh, which nickname you're using. Um She's, um, yeah, she's good. She's great when she plays, a, there's a scene where she has to play a Russian and that scene is hysterical. Really liked it. It was, was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so uh, another good, I mean, all the cast in this are really good, got to say. So we should also give the casting director a shout out. And you've got quite a few um, people that just do one, one episode, like um, stand-up comedian Dar Salaam, um, Peter Serafinowitz, who does an amazing Scouse accent, um, 
flawless actually um you know there, there's lots of people like that um who who do small roles um all right there's your fifteen thousand producers um so, okay okay so we've got three dops on the show it's got a really flawless look though um casting daniel hubbard of course son of the hubbards and rory oakey so great casting by uh, hubbard and oakey on the show really good um art direction as well set decoration very nice uh costumes are great as well really love the costumes for the show so it's it's this is i mean you know i expected it to be a, a certain type of show because it's obviously it's guy Ritchie. um but i i just didn't I, I i just didn't think it would be um as good and it, it it's like it's really weird because it's a it's a it's a sort of hyper real nonsense world where it still feels like this could exist somewhere over the horizon the, these people these characters even though we know it's nonsense but i care more about all of the characters in this than i do about any of the characters in masters of the air and and i mean that really is saying something um we're going to be reviewing episode eight of masters of the air tomorrow at nine o'clock i've got a cocoon watch party at um uh that's at 6 p.m tomorrow so um yeah i recommend the gentleman brilliant television definitely best of british um one of the best kind of crime caper thriller comedies if, if that's a combined genre um i thought yeah really good uh just say hello to vincent vega in the chat tombi and the mysterious background noise thank you for popping in and leaving a comment uh, if you haven't seen it, definitely watch it. It's it's really, really good. Just going to remind people coming up on the 24th of March. Don't forget, we have some very special guests in the house uh, that day when we're talking about this. Base, this is Station 31. Do you copy? This is Station 31, Base. Are you there? We found something. Something in the ice. The generator's down. We're running low on supplies, and we're out of chocolate. We're gonna run out of chocolate? Not now, Janine. 